Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So I was checking out an interview that Tony Harrison just did, um, who is about to have a big fight coming up versus Tim Zhu. Could put him right back into uh, the lineup to be able to get an opportunity to fight Jamel Trollo in a trilogy and get a chance at Undisputed. Of course, he trains Alicia Baumgartner, so... Um, they were uh, fight hype was able to catch up to him and and get a little interview. They asked him about his upcoming fight versus Tim Zhu. Um, asked him about uh, Alicia Baumgartner's uh, rise to success and as she continues to um, just put on incredible performances. Of course, she just became um, undisputed this past weekend versus uh, Mechalid. I believe that's how you say the, that uh, young lady's name. You dig what I'm saying, but. Uh, you know, so Tony Harrison having a lot of motion right now, um, training one of the best female boxers in the sport. Also, you know, back in title contention himself. And of course, he's been a career 154 pound fighter, um, highly competitive, has been he's a former world champion, um, you know, has fought at the highest level. And they asked him about Errol Spence, um, you know, asked him about what he thinks of Earl Spence moving up to 154, his weight division, um, you know, talk, ask him about what he thinks about the, the uh, Earl Spence and Keith Thurman fight, what he thinks about them having that fight at 154, what that means for 147 and a potential Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford fight. So um, he said a lot of interesting things. And one of them was that um, once Earl Spence moves up to 154, it's over with. And this is just based based off of his perspective as a fighter once you go up in weight to a division and you see how much more comfortable it is to make that weight and you see how how much better you feel uh fighting at that weight uh not having to, to deplete yourself and lose those extra you know uh six seven pounds and then you know there's a different walk around weight that you have um access to once you kind of move up to a different weight class and he was like man once earl gets to that weight um and he see how good it feel he not gonna want to go back down but you know he also said that he felt like earl spence could fight at any weight and be dominant showed a lot of respect for earl spence man and that just goes to show uh, a fighter of tony harrison's caliber as skilled as he is being able to recognize what a guy like earl spence can do and um you know he talked about uh uh Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford most likely having to take place at 154, which I've been saying a lot recently ever since Terrence Crawford made the move that he made to which essentially prolong the fight uh, potentially happening at 147. Of course, you know him, you know, potentially signing a, a multi fight deal with Golden Boy that also, you know, puts a damper on undisputed at 47 because Earl Spence has been saying time after time. I don't have too much longer at this weight. It's getting harder to make the weight, even though Earl Spence has never been, never missed weight, has been a consummate professional, um, has been sharp, has, you know, looked phenomenal at his most recent weigh-ins, the Danny Garcia weigh-in, fresh off the accident, looked really good, looked way better than he did the pre, uh, prior to that at the Sean Porter and the Mikey Garcia weigh-ins. Uh, then came back for the Yordini, the Yordinas Ugas weigh-in, looked better than i've ever seen him to be quite honest he looked as good as he looked at at the kale brook weigh-in you know what i'm saying when he was like young super young and you know really in his in his phys in his best physical shape up until that point so um you know and, and he just talked about uh you know how earl spence is you know pretty much you know ready to take his career to that next level and 154 i think this is Earl Spence moving up to 154 is him starting the second half of his career. I think Earl will be a, a lot more, a lot stronger. I think he'll, he'll. Uh, you see what his gas tank is like now. I think his gas tank is going to go to another level. You know what I'm saying? You will have more endurance when you don't have to deplete yourself and drain yourself down. Your endurance go up. Your stamina go up. I think his punching power will carry up to 154. I think his punch resistance, his ability to take a decent shot will be increased. 
Uh, I just think Earl Spence will be a more complete fighter at 154, and this will give us an opportunity to see all the tools that he has because fighting bigger guys, it makes you pull out more tools. I think you will see more foot movement and, you know, uh, sharper angles from Earl Spence, where, whether it be coming forward or boxing off of the back foot. I think you will see him use the jab in even more variations. I believe Earl Spence has... Uh, if not the best jab, definitely one of the best jabs in boxing, not because it's the strongest, not because it's the fastest, not because it's the most accurate, but, but because it's a combination of all those things he uses in different variations. And I think he's the most effective with his jab, being able to blind guys and set them up for shots and, and make them put their hands in their pocket. You dig what I'm saying? So um, I think Earl Spence is going to be just a more complete fighter at 154. I really love the Keith Thurman fight happening at 154. And I I would love to see Earl Spence come back down for undisputed and fight Terrence Crawford. But the way Terrence Crawford been moving, bro, I wouldn't advise Earl to wait on him, dog. So at this point, I think Spence needs to keep doing what he's doing. And if Terrence Crawford wants that smoke, he's going to have to bring his ass up to 154 and fight, you know, in my opinion, is what's going to be an even stronger Earl Spence. That's just what it's going to be. But Terrence Crawford has made uh, numerous claims about uh, wanting to move up to 154 and challenge Jamil Charlo. Talked about how I, I heard in an interview recently with Terrence Crawford that he plans on, you know, finishing his career at 154. So I think it all makes sense. And uh, But Tony Harrison said some some very interesting stuff, man. Uh, I would have to agree that, uh, you know, if Earl, once he go up and fight Keith Thurman, you know, he feel good at that weight, man. It's going to be hard to get him back down unless... Terrence Crawford is ready to fight next, but I just don't see that happening. He's talking about fighting Alexis Rocha, potentially fighting a Virgil Ortiz. Uh, you know, he if he does actually go through with that deal with Golden Boy, we could be, we could be talking about Terrence Crawford fighting uh, um, a uh, Blair Cobb. It just wouldn't be wise for Earl Spence to sit around and wait and see what Terrence Crawford is going to do. At this point, Earl Spence has uh, multiple options uh, at 154 and at 147 if you look at seven of the eight titles that are held between those two divisions 147 and 154 are all with the pbc uh, jamel charlo of course is the undisputed champion at 154 with all the titles and earl spence is a unified champion with three of the four welterweight titles so you know, uh, I think he should just go ahead and make his move. Go fight Keith Thurman. Um, let use that fight as a barometer just to kind of see how he how he looks, how he feels. If there's any type of adjustments or uh, you know things that he that he needs to do to kind of uh, make that transition smoother, I think he'll find all of those things out in the Keith Thurman fight. Even though Keith Thurman is not a true 154 pounder. That will just give him an give him an opportunity to just see where he's at, and then from there, you know, if Terrence Crawford's still, you know, moving around trying to do other things, go ahead and get you a fight in with a real 154 pounder, and that's where you're gonna see what the punch resistance is like. That's where you're gonna see the size difference and kind of see how how Earl Spence uh, performs on that level versus a true 154 pounder. So I thought Tony Harrison uh, really shed a lot of light. From a fighter's perspective, from a uh, a super welterweight perspective, on what it might be like for Earl Spence moving up to that division, and what that could mean for uh, future matchups for Earl Spence. But y'all, let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Uh, do y'all agree with Tony Harrison that once Earl Spence moves up to 154, that is over with? He's not coming back down. It's just that he's going to be an official 154 pounder. And then also, what would you like to see for Earl Spence's first two or three fights at 154? You know, what are you expecting to see from Earl Spence in that division that we didn't see at 147? Do you expect him to get better? Do you expect him to regress? Do you expect to see more tools that we haven't seen? Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. Contender regime boxing. I holla at y'all boys, man.